In this video, we're going to be reviewing the Love Notions Sabrina Slims. Hi, it's Megan from Sew and Tell Australia, and I'm one of Love Notions ambassadors. And I'm so excited this week to be reviewing the Love Notions Sabrina Slim Pants, which is this week's Feature Friday pattern, Friday the 26th of May. I'll also be giving some construction tips on how to get the best look for your pants, including a really detailed look at how to get the best welt pocket, because I think there's nothing better than a really beautiful crisp welt pocket. So I give you my number one tips and I go through a very detailed look at taking you through how to get the best welt pocket. So I hope you stick around to have a look at that. Now, I thought I really loved the duet trousers, but let me tell you, I am in love with the Sabrina Slims. They are such a beautiful fit. I really felt that they looked just so nice on me. Uh, I would recommend making a muslin. <laughs> I made a muslin in a size 20, which is what my measurements told me to make. And then I thought I would do my actual pair that I'm reviewing for this as a size 18. So that's what I made to review at the end. And they are slightly snugger fit. So while I can still wear them, I think the size 20 probably does look a little bit better, but I will go through that when I go through the different pattern options and fabric requirements, just to show you sort of where I went wrong so that you don't make my mistake as well. So these are a really great work slack pant. You can sort of dress them up or down and they just make a really comfortable pair of pants to be able to wear around the office or if you're going out for dinner or any of those kind of dressier occasions. Not to say you can't wear them in a more casual setting, but I do think these lend themselves well to those sort of more slightly dressed up occasions. They are a more modern take on the cigarette style pant that was made quite popular during the 1950s, most notably worn by Audrey Hepburn. So they're quite slim fitting, they hug, they sit around the natural waist, they hit at the ankle, and they're just a sort of more dressier style. I do love that there's a maternity option as well, that always gets a vote from me. Not that I'm having any more babies, but I do appreciate that there are mater more maternity options out there. So there's heaps I could say about the Sabrina Slims, but let's get straight into looking at what fabrics are best for this and the requirements needed. So the fabric requirements are for a Ponty, Scuba, I used a Bengaline for mine. Um, you can also use a French Terry, interlock, cotton lycra, any of those more medium to heavyweight knits you can use as long as they're more stable. And then in terms of the stretch wovens, you can look at like a stretch sateen, corduroy, twill, even a jacquard or denim, as long as it's got at least that 20% stretch, you should be right to make them with that fabric. You just need to make sure if you are making the maternity option that for the maternity waistband, you do make it out of the cotton lycra and that is for comfort so that you've got some sort of softness and area to grow as you grow. So I recommend making that out of a cotton lycra uh, with four way stretch, or even you, if you wanted, you could make it out of like a rib or a, a rib knit, that could be quite nice as well, but you just need something with quite a bit of stretch. When you're making the welt pocket, it is uh, recommended that you use a lightweight woven, and that's just so you don't have anything too heavy and bulky sort of sitting around the buttock, buttock area. So let's take a look at those pattern options. So it comes in a size zero to 32, so quite an inclusive size range, something I always love. I cannot recommend enough to make a muslin. Make a muslin, make a muslin, make a muslin. Pants are notoriously hard to fit, so it's really important that you make a muslin and try out any changes. Like I said, I probably should have made another muslin in the size 18 so that I could discover that they are a little bit snug, but you know, it just it's so important that you make the muslin so you know what you're getting. There is a pants fitting book with this pattern, so I recommend that you read through that book really well. It helps give you really great diagrams on how to decipher any uh, wrinkles that you're getting in your pants but just remember that pants do inherently have some wrinkles it is something you know we move our legs around we move our torsos around there are always going to be some wrinkles in your pants so you're not striving for wrinkle free pants but you know you can sort of negate some of those more obvious wrinkles like a camel toe or stretching across your belly or a flat bum or there's a few different things that you can make adjustments for just so that you get a fit, better fit for yourself. In terms of options for this pants, 
there are three different inseam length options. So there's a 26, a 28 and a 30 inch. That really helps give you the best option for where your pants are going to hit. They are meant to hit at the ankle, so you can adjust it to fit. Makes it really easy when they're the hems on the pants because you can just sort of adjust it. There is also an optional uh, ankle split. So you can either have it as just a straight split or you can have a zipper. The zipper is quite a cool option, I actually think. I didn't do it, but I might plan to make a pair. I think it just helps dress it down a little bit. You could wear it with a little pair of boots or, you know, your ballet flats. And I just think it looks really nice when you've got little extra options like the zippers in there. So it has a wide contoured waistband, which is meant to sit around your natural waist. They are quite figure hugging, uh, but I do think that works to your advantage when you sew a pair or when you make a pair that fit nicely. Um, the figure hugging doesn't have to mean that they don't look nice as long as you fit them to your body. I think they can look really amazing. There are three different types of pockets. There is a front pocket, a back patch pocket, or you can make the welt pocket, which is what I'm going to show you how to do. But I do love when there are options for pockets because pockets for me are life. The other version that you can make is with center seaming. So that is seaming down the front and the back of the pants, which is just a style option. I didn't make a pair myself, but they were quite a popular uh, feature in the 50s. So if you want to go for that more cigarette style look, you can put the center seaming in. However, I chose not to, but it is all worked out for you, which is always nice and not have to work out yourself. So the last thing I want to mention is just when you are making your pants to fit, just have a look at your finish measurements as well. That can really give you a good idea about what size you need to make. Um, and just comparing what your measurements are to the finished measurements. And if you do have something like a more prominent belly, you can look at doing a full belly adjustment as well, just to help get, make it fit nicely through your bottom and thigh and ankle area and still accommodating for the front area as well. Let's take a look at the supplies we need to make your Sabrina Slims. So some of the things we'll need to make your Sabrina Slims, you will need either clips or pins. I'm a big fan of using clips. I just think they're easier to work with. However, there is always a need for pins, especially if you're putting in things like zips. I think pins can help a little bit better, but then equally clips can be quite helpful as well. So I like to use both. You will need either a good pair of fabric scissors or a rotary cutter. I'm team rotary but whatever you need, just make sure you've got a really sharp pair. It helps make sure you don't snag the fabric or have it move too much while you're, you're cutting. So having a really sharp quality pair of either fabric scissors or a rotary cutter is a really good idea. You will also need tailor's chalk or some kind of marking tool with the welt pocket to get a really nice crisp welt pocket. You do need to make sure you've marked all your notches very important. So making sure you've got a good pen or chalk that's not going to rub off while you're working with it is really important. So I like to use Taylor's chalk and then it just washes away in the wash after you've finished. You do also need your matching thread, um, a zipper if you're going to be using the zippered option, just making sure you're following the instructions for the size and color if you want to match color or you can go totally out there and go complimentary if you want to. That's the best part of sewing. You get to pick the options yourself. If you are doing the zipper or welt options, you do need a quality interfacing. I like to have iron on interfacing and it just, as it says, irons on. A lightweight interfacing is always really easy to use. And then elastic. So it does call for two inch elastic. I used an inch and a half and it was okay. Uh, but you can also get two one inch elastics and sew them together if you need to side by side. I've seen that happen as well. But some good quality elastic for the waistband really just helps keep them up and give them that nice shape as well. The last thing you need is your serger. Uh, or sewing machine. It's not required that you have a serger to sew these. However, if you are using a normal machine, I highly recommend that you finish off any of the raw edges just so they don't fray. You'll be very disappointed if your pants fell apart. So whilst it isn't required that you have a serger, it is definitely advantageous, but you can absolutely make these on a normal sewing machine as well. So let's take a look at my construction tips and then I will go step by step on how to make a really beautiful welt pocket. So I think people can be quite afraid of welt pockets, but I promise you there is nothing to be afraid of. As long as you are very precise in your sewing, there's no reason why you can't get a really nice looking crisp welt pocket. 
One of my number one tips is to definitely make sure you have marked out all your notches, very, very important. Using a good quality interfacing also really helps with that, keeping it nice and, and steady while you're sewing it. Being quite precise with your sewing, so making sure you're back stitching at the start and end of your seams uh, for where you're going to cut it out. And also when you're sewing the triangles, being really precise with that sewing makes a big, big difference. And my absolute number one, cannot skip this step, is to press. Press your garment and then press it again. It's really important to make sure you press with your iron in between each step because it just really helps get your precision with when you're sewing and also just makes it look really, really beautiful. So you can't do a welt pocket unless you're pressing in my opinion. So without further ado, I'm going to take you through my welt pocket and how I made it. And it gives you a really in-depth look at how to get the perfect welt pocket. The first thing we need to do is to apply our interfacing to our welt pocket pieces. So we have our two welt pocket lining pieces and then we've got our two back pocket or back pieces. So we're going to get our interfacing and just line it up over the lines that we've already drawn. It is important to make sure you've marked all your lines. So I'm going to pop my interfacing down there and I'm just going to give it a good press so that it sticks to my piece. The reason we're putting interfacing on is just to help give it that really crisp looking interface, oh, it welt pocket. It just really helps give it that extra stability to give it a nice crisp look when we've done our welt pocket. So I've got my first one done. I'm just using a light interfacing. Doesn't have to be super heavy. It is really just to make sure that you are getting a nice foundation to put your, to start your welt pocket with. So I'm giving it a really good press. It's a good idea not to use um, steam when you're putting your interfacing on. I'm just using an iron on interface here. So I've got my two pieces done, my facing pieces. So I've now got my first back leg piece. And again, I'm going to fuse the interfacing just where the, po the markings are. I'll give it a really good press. And I'll also do it to the other side and then we can move on to the next step. Now we're going to put our welt pocket facing pieces on the right side of our pants. So with right sides together, we're gonna line up these markings here, the start and stop of these lines with our markings that are on the back pocket piece. So what I like to do is I get a pin and I just kind of line it up and these lines are a little bit out. So I'm just going to line it up there and then pop a pin in. Then I'll get another pin and I'll put it through here. And I can see my other line is here. So it's a bit out, but that will be okay. And I'll pop it here. Just check it is matching. So we are covered there. So what I'll then do is I'll put a couple more pins in to secure it. And then I'm gonna do the same to the other side. So now I've got my two pants backs with my welt facings in place. I can take this to my machine and we'll sew it up. So now that I'm at my machine, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to come down at the start of this line, make sure I back stitch it. And then I'm gonna sew all the way to the other end where the end of the line is and back stitch it there as well. And then I'm gonna repeat on the other side. And it's really important to make sure you get these two lines equal. So it's important that you've marked these right to begin with. So I've just back stitched. And now I'm gonna go down the line, making sure that I follow it so that I get a nice straight line. 
and then at the other end I'm going to get to that dot and then back stitch it. I have my straight line here so I can repeat to the bottom. So I've now got my two parallel lines. I'm going to do the same to the other back leg and then we'll do the next step. We have our two welt pockets here that we've stitched. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to cut a slit here and we're going to leave it sort of about three eighths of an inch before the end and we're going to clip into the corners in a Y shape and we're going to do that in both at both ends. So I'm going to snip along here and then clip into those corners and I'm going to cut up to but not through the stitches. So I've opened that up. I'm now going to cut down all the way to this and then cut a little Y. So I'm cutting up to but not through the stitches. Same on the other side, up to but not through. And then I'll turn it around again, cutting up to but not through, and then up to but not through. So we now have a gap. I'm going to repeat this to my other side and then I'll show you the next step. Now that I've cut both of these, what we're going to do is we're actually going to push them through to the other side like so. And we're going to actually give these a super, super good press. So I'll take us back over to the iron. But when you're looking, if you don't have a really crisp, nice corner, just make sure you've clipped all the way to those dots because that is how you get a nice crisp corner in your welt pocket. So if you don't have a nice crisp corner on the welts or on the corners of the pockets, just check on this side to make sure you've clipped all the way to but not through those back stitches. And so we're going to take it over to the iron and give it a really, really good press. So with the iron, we're going to give it a really, really good press. Now that we're here. Just to give it that really nice, crispy, crispy look. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to fold this up. So I'm folding the bottom piece up and I'm going to give it a really good press so that I get a nice line, a nice crease. And then we're going to fold this back down so it just sort of kisses the top of the opening like this. And we're going to give that another really, really good press. So we want to make sure that it's got a really good crease that we can work with. And that's going to help give us a really nice look from the front side. So I've done that. I'm going to just flip it over and have a bit of a look. It's all sitting nice and flat. It's kissing the top of the opening quite nicely. So I'm going to set that one aside and do the same to my other side and then we'll go ahead with the next part. For this next part, from the right side of your pants, we're going to fold back this piece and where you can see this little triangle here, we're actually going to sew across this little piece here making sure we back stitch at the start and the end, sewing through all of this, but not our front pocket, well, not our back pant piece. So we don't wanna sew through the main fabric piece. We just wanna sew through these welt pocket pieces. So we're gonna sew from the start to the end on both sides and on both back pant pieces. So I'm gonna take it over to my machine and we're gonna sew this little triangle here on all four bits. 
So I've got my little triangle piece sticking out here. I've got all my welt interfacing and this is the front of my pants. So I don't want to be sewing through that. And I'm just going to start at the top, making sure I back stitch and sewing all the way down to the bottom. You can go as slowly as you need to on this because you really want to make sure this part looks right. We've got our little triangle done here. And then from the front, from the front, it's all nice and clean here. And now I can repeat it to the other side. So I finished doing the other side as well, making sure I started and stopped over that triangle, looking nice and crisp. So I can put this aside, do my other pant leg, and then we can move on. For this next step, we've got our welt pocket bags. We're gonna take our pieces, turn them over. And what we're gonna do is we're going to align the top of the pocket bag to the top of our welt pocket piece. pin or clip it and then we're going to serge across the, the top here. If you're not using a serger it's definitely recommended to finish these edges with either a zigzag stitch or an overcast stitch just to prevent any fraying. So I'm going to take this to my overlocker and then we can attach these pieces. I've got my pocket bag here making sure that I've got everything else out of the way so I've only got the pocket facing and the pocket bag and I'm now just going to surge straight across the top. Once I've done that I can repeat to the other side and we'll go to the next step. The next thing we're doing is we're back at our iron and we're going to fold down this top piece. So it was like that, but we're going to fold it down like so. And we're gonna give it a really good press across the top here. One of the really main important and top tips I can give you about getting a really crisp welt pocket is to make sure you don't skip any of the pressing. It's so important with a nice welt pocket to do all the pressing steps because it just helps give it the really best foundation, I guess, to have a nice looking welt pocket. So I've, so I've ironed that down. And now what I'm gonna do is take my piece up, clip along here, and I'm going to overlock it across the top there. Making sure that I have, again, only my pocket bag and pocket facing pieces, I'm going to stitch along here. So our welt pocket should look like this now. And I'm gonna take it back to my iron to look at the next step. The last thing we need to do to finish off this welt bag after we've surged the bottom of that is we're going to fold it down so it's all nice and flat. So we've got that sitting there. I'm going to give it another really good press. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna surge down these sides here and that will complete our pocket bag. So we wanna make sure that we're only surging the pocket bag pieces, not anything on our pant piece. So I'm gonna take it to my overlocker and I'm gonna surge down there, making sure I obviously do it to both sides of my pant pieces and then our welt pockets will be done. Now I have two complete welt pockets that look super, super sexy. I'm really pleased with how these pockets came out. They look neat, they're tidy, 
they're really beautiful and I just love how they're looking. So now I can go on with constructing the rest of my Sabrina Slims and stay tuned for the reveal. Here are my pair of Sabrina Slims that I made in a really beautiful Bengaline. So as you can see, they are a tiny bit snug. So I probably should have looked at the measurements a little bit better. Around the knee, they're a little bit snugger. They've just got a couple of drag lines that I know I could probably fix if I needed to, but it's not terrible. Like I can still wear them quite comfortably. I've got my welt pockets that look beautiful. Very happy with those. I've also got my front pockets, which are also really comfortable. I'm really comfortable with where it's sitting on my waist. I think especially given that it's got that elastic to sort of help everything sit neater, it's looking quite nice as well. So it's quite flattering from the side. I will also say it makes a big difference the underwear that you're wearing. They call it foundation garments for a reason, is the foundation of a well-fitting or well-sitting garment. So if you've got underwear that's too tight, it can sort of not help when you're wearing a more fitted style pant. So I've got a really good pair of underwear on and I'm not talking about tummy suckers or anything, just a nice fitted pair of underwear makes a big difference. So I've got a nice pair of that. It's all sitting nicely and I'm really happy with the fit in general. So these would go really well with a pair of ballet flats or a nice little pair of boots that you could wear. Um, in terms of garments you can pair it with, you could have it with a Melody Dolman, which is what I took my photos in. So you'll get to see my photos with the Melody Dolman. You could also use the Aria button down or something like the Terra tunic or even newly re-released Lotus blouse or even the newly released Lennox top. So there are quite a few options. I'll link them all down below that you can have a look at as well but it's just such a gorgeous pair of pants that I'm really, really happy with. So that's my review and construction tips on how to get a beautiful Sabrina Slims. I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun putting it together. It's always fun when I get to collaborate with Love Notions and definitely make sure you pick up your pair of Sabrina Slims on special for $5 this week. Friday the 26th of May. I hope I've demonstrated how much I love them. I hope it encourages you to give them a try as well. They're great for work. They're great for coming into winter, which it is over in the Southern Hemisphere. You could even make a sneaky fleece lined pair if you wanted. I know there's some fabrics out there that are fleece lined. Uh, so that would be very nice to have nice secret warm leggings, but just give it a go. And like I said, as long as you sew a muslin and sort of iron out any of those kinks, I really think there's no reason why you can't make a beautiful pair of Sabrina Slims for yourself. So I invite you to come and follow me on socials if you liked what I've talked about today. You can find me on all the socials, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, my website, and tag me in any of your makes. If you're inspired, tag me so that I can gush over your makes as well. And I encourage you to come and check out my exclusive member area, the Sewing Corner, where I give personalized advice and help get you out of the sewing overwhelm and more into the sewing success. So enjoy the feature Friday this week and I hope you enjoyed the video.